Hey everyone, Krissa here, and I am so excited to take you on a tour of beautiful Silver Glen Springs located in the Ocala National Forest. If you're looking for a fun place to get away for the day, I'm going to go through all of the details of Silver Glen to see if this might be a really great choice for you and your family. So let's get into it. Silver Glen is a very popular swimming hole that's located in the Ocala National Forest, which is a little over an hour north of Orlando, Florida. This first magnitude spring discharges about 65 million gallons of water per day and comes from two large vents, which keeps the water a refreshing 72 degrees all year long. Here at Silver Glen, you can picnic, swim, snorkel, and kayak. Unfortunately, there's no scuba diving that's allowed in the spring, but you can snorkel. Silver Glen Springs is open every day of the year from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. However, expect it to reach capacity quickly, especially during the peak season. They do close the park down once they've reached capacity, and they will only open up at 2 p.m. if they have the room. We visited on a beautiful Saturday morning during the down season and was determined to get out on the water by renting a couple of kayaks from the park to explore the entire length of the spring run and parts of Lake George. Since we were visiting in the slow season, we had no trouble getting into the park in the morning when we arrived. We were able to pay for our entry and rent our kayaks from the general store that's located within the park. And if you forget any essentials at home, they also offer a few other items here like towels, swimming essentials, and a few snacks. And by the way, if you are finding this information helpful, I would love it if you could hit that like button and subscribe if you would love to discover more things like this to do in my beautiful state of Florida. I release a new video every week that covers everything from theme parks, springs, beaches, and more, and you can see all of it by subscribing. If you are renting a kayak from the park, you are required to sign a waiver, and they do give you a life jacket, whistle, and paddles at the store, which you will have to carry with you to where the kayaks are located near the spring. One thing I do want to mention is that they only offer single kayaks here, so you'll want to keep that in mind if you are planning on going with anyone else. One of the things that I loved about Silver Glen is that the swimming area is a really great size. Like I said earlier, there are two main spring heads that feed the spring area. And the main spring head is located right in the middle of the swimming area. You'll be able to spot it by finding the bubbles coming up from the spring head. The secondary spring is a natural well and you'll be able to find it in a roped off area on the edge of the main spring. They do have this area roped off because they are rehabilitating the habitat here, so swimmers are not allowed in the area near the smaller spring. Also, I want you to keep in mind that there are no boats of any kind allowed in the swimming area not even kayaks, so you'll want to make sure that you stay out of the roped area while you're in your kayak. If you are kayaking, you'll get into your kayaks at the edge of the spring basin and self-launch from there. You can paddle the entire spring run, which is only about three-fourths of a mile, but it's crystal clear water all the way out to Lake George, which happens to be the second largest lake in Florida, just behind Lake Okeechobee. One thing that I did notice while we were here is that Silver Glen is a very popular location for boaters, and you'll start seeing them finding spots near the spring even in the early hours of the morning. If you or anyone in your party is new to kayaking, it can get a little intimidating with the number of boaters that make its way through the spring run. If you are looking for a quiet spring to get away from the crowds for the day, I have to say that this probably isn't one of them. The spring is very beautiful, but you'll want to expect it to be crowded and a little loud, especially if you visit on a beautiful day over the weekend. Even in the slow period, you'll find that the spring is pretty crowded with boats. 
I have heard in the summer that the spring can get almost impossible to navigate through with the number of boats that make its way in and out through the spring run. So keep that in mind if you are visiting during the summer. It was a little difficult to navigate even for us during the slow season. So I can only imagine how much more challenging it could get when it's packed with even more boats and crowds. But if you do have a boat, it does seem like a really fun place to hang out. There was even a boat in the middle of the spring that was selling barbecue, and if you're not able to grab a kayak from the park itself, one of the boats were even renting out kayaks and paddle boards that you could rent out on an hourly or even for the entire day. Once we were able to get out on the water, we heard from one of the employees that there was a small run on the opposite side of the spring that went a short ways, so we made our way over there first to go and check it out. And it was a really pretty area, but the water did get a lot shallower, so we didn't really make it very far before we had to turn back to avoid getting stuck. So once we finished exploring the top of the spring, we started making our way down the spring run towards Lake George. And the water in Silver Glen is just beautiful. It's one of the best ecological quality springs that you can find in all of the Florida springs. And you're able to easily see your way all the way to the bottom of the spring. You'll definitely want to take your time as you make your way down the run because you'll see a number of different fish and turtles and even a couple of alligators. Another amazing sight that you'll want to make sure to capture while you're here are these awesome bass beds that are sprinkled throughout the run, which causes almost a polka dot look at the bottom of the spring. It really is a fascinating sight to see as you're kayaking down the short run. Once you do hit Lake George, you'll pass a few islands and a sandbar before making it into this incredible lake. And Lake George is huge to say the least, and you can barely see your way across to the other side. The waters in the lake are a lot more choppy since there's a lot more boats in the water to compete with, so it does get a bit more difficult to navigate. We followed the edge of the lake to see if we might be able to find any more interesting areas near the spring. And we were able to come across a few things like this cove of cypress trees, as well as a few shorelines that were completely covered in shells. While we were in the lake, we also got to see a few small planes that were flying overhead and swooping down really close to the water. Once we were done exploring the lake, we started making our way back to the spring and that's when we came across a little alligator. He was a really small gator, maybe about two or three feet. So I do want to remind you that there will be alligators in any natural body of water here in Florida. If you do come across any gators while you're in the water, just make sure to give them enough space to respect them and they won't bother you. By the time that we did get back to the spring, it was a lot more crowded than when we left and quite a few more boats were making their way back and forth through the spring run. So you'll want to be very careful as you're kayaking through this area. Once we got back from kayaking, we wanted to make sure to explore the trails in Silver Glen because we heard that there were a couple of notable things to discover. So we made our way over to the other side of the spring where the start of Spring Boil Trail is. Spring Boil Trail is a very short trail and only about three fourths of a mile round trip. And it's all under this lush canopy of Florida greenery. It's a really easy walk and wouldn't be difficult for anyone in your party. But if you want to see something really cool at the very end of this trail, you'll find these amazing little sand boils. These boils are created when the water escapes from underground aquifers and creates the solution of boiling sand under the water. There are two observation decks where you can view the sand boils, and the one on the right has this large sand boil, and the one on the left has multiple little sand boils that are spread throughout this tiny little spring cove. 
Once we finished with the Sand Boils Trail, we made our way over to the Lake George Trail, which is a longer 2.3 mile round trip trail and goes towards the shoreline of Lake George. And if you're looking for a way to get away from the crowds for a little while while you're visiting Silver Glen, then you'll want to explore this trail. The trail itself is also a very easy walk under lush trees that cover most of the trail. Once you get closer to the end, you'll come across a split where if you go to the right, you'll discover a small sandy beach where you can take a break and look out on the water. At the other end of the trail, you'll find the Lake Overlook where the trail ends. It is a beautiful trail to get away for a little bit. And if you do decide to walk this trail, I highly recommend putting on some bug spray, especially if you're planning on visiting during the summer. If you are planning on visiting Silver Glen Springs, here are a few things to keep in mind. Silver Glen Springs is an incredible spring and is very popular spot for visitors and boaters alike, especially over the summer and any beautiful day in particular. They do close the park once they hit capacity, and I have heard that during the peak season, they are known to fill up within the first hour that they open. So you'll want to make sure that you get there early and have a backup plan just in case. Silver Glen is a historical, archaeological site in Florida history, and while you're in the park, make sure to keep an eye out for large mounds of shells. These mounds are considered historical trash heaps from human settlements throughout history and have held evidence of some of the first natives from 3,000 years ago, along with remains that were more than 10,000 years ago. Also, keep in mind that this isn't really a peaceful spring to visit. This is a very popular place for boaters, each playing their music louder than the other, so it can get pretty loud here. So if you're looking for a place to get away from the crowds for the day, this might not be the spring for you. If you do visit during the winter, there are manatees that do seek refuge in the spring on the cold days. We didn't see any on our visit, but you'll want to keep an eye out for them if you are visiting on a chilly day. Since Silver Glen is located in the middle of Ocala National Forest, it is a bit of a drive to any type of store or ATM for that matter. If you do forget any essentials at home, they do have a few items in the general store located in the park entrance. If you are wondering what other beautiful springs there are to explore in Florida, then you'll want to check out my playlist that just popped up on the screen. In this playlist, I'll take you on a tour of several beautiful natural springs that you won't want to miss. Until next time, everyone, I hope you have an amazing day and go out and enjoy some Florida sunshine.